Good morning, and welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Daniel Pino, and I'm a longtime Microsoft Access MVP. Um, today, as you can see on the screen, a simple little, small little topic that I thought I'd um, clarify a little bit and try to help a few of you Mac users out there, Apple users out there, and clarify the whole question of running Office, running Microsoft Access, running many other Windows software, how can you run these in a Mac environment? So the first thing we need to clarify, and obviously my YouTube channel is access centric, so we're going to speak specifically about access for one moment here, is we're going to clarify the whole point of um, people that have claimed in the past, you know, we used to have access for Mac. No, there never has been a version of Microsoft access for Mac. Um, now, why is that? Now, that's a huge question. That's one that we'd need Microsoft, the Microsoft Access Dev, Dev Team, to actually be in a position to answer us properly. People have all sorts of theories on this and ideas. Some people say there weren't enough of a user base when Access was created to warrant the investment of time and energy. Other people have speculated that it would require completely rewriting the software as it is incompatible completely with uh, Mac. I don't know. I'm not going to go any further. I'm not going to venture any more guesses. Um, only Microsoft can truly give us an answer. All I know is there has never been a version of Access for Mac. And I highly, highly doubt, even though people have asked on user voice, asked on the feedback portal for years and years and years with strong support comparatively to other elements. Um, and Microsoft just doesn't seem to, um, I don't know, get take the hint. Um, but they're also very strapped for resources, as we've seen in some of my other posts. Um, and they probably, I guess, can't take on that big a task. Um, you know, it's always weighing pros and cons, and I guess they don't see enough of a pro side to warrant the investment of resources. Okay, with that out of the way, that doesn't mean that we can't run Windows software, Access specifically, or Office, in Mac, but it goes well beyond Office. So when I say Windows software, I do mean any other Windows piece of software that you need to run on a Mac. Um, now, I'm just going to rattle off, but let's say you needed uh, Sage or QuickBooks or uh, you wanted to run, God knows, uh, Snagit or, you know, some other piece of software and they don't have a Mac version. I don't know those softwares if they do or don't. I'm just rattling off a few names there. But there are approaches you can use. So you can still have those available to you within your Mac computer. How do we go about it? Well, my article covers five different approaches. Each has pros and cons, like everything in life, and you need to decide what will work best for you. The number one solution, in my mind at least, is virtualization software. Um, what virtualization software is, is you literally create another computer, basically what they call a virtual machine, and then with this virtualization software, it will run it inside your current machine. So you'll have your Mac, you'll be in your Mac OS, and you'll have a button to launch your virtualization software. And then you'll say, launch me my Windows 10 machine with Office 2021. And it will load up and run inside your Mac. Um, many pros to this. Um, one of the nice things that I like, what I've had with happen in my own life was I had a computer that was dying. I was able to just take my virtual machines, copy them over to a new machine, and I was up and running. I didn't have to do a thing. Um, there is a cost obviously associated with this. You need to have virtualization software. Some you pay for, some you don't. Um, all of those, once again, have pros and cons that you need to weigh and decide if you want to pay for virtualization software or not. And then with virtualization software, you literally are building a computer, although it be a, a virtual one, 
but you still need to have the proper licensing, which means you have to have purchased a license for Windows first, because you have to install Windows, and then you have to have purchased a license for every other piece of software you want to install inside that Windows computer. So you would also need, in this case, a license of Office or Access. The next possible solution would be to use Boot Camp. And that creates a dual boot machine. Um, the same is true. You can do this with Linux. You can do this with Windows. Well, you can do it with Mac. Um, and with Boot Camp, you basically create a partition. You split your hard drive. So you allocate space that will be used for a Windows partition. And the remaining space that you leave remains for your Mac machine. So you're going to actually install Windows on your hard drive and then you'll install whatever uh, different programs you want inside that Windows machine. Um, so basically when you start up your computer, you will be offered the choice of, do you wanna go into your Mac machine or do you wanna go into your Windows machine? Um, unlike using virtualization software, you can't have both running at the same time. You can't switch back and forth. You actually have to exit out of, let's say your Windows machine to go back in to your Mac and vice versa. They're mutually exclusive. Whereas a virtualization software, they are not. You can have them running at the exact same time in the exact same screen or different screens, however you're organized. Uh, next would be remote software. Now this many of you are familiar with. Well, if you've got another Windows PC machine somewhere in the office, accessible to you or available to you, even if it is in the office, um, at your home or whatnot, well, you can use remote access software. Uh, I give a couple options here, Microsoft Remote Desktop, Team Viewer, and you can connect to it from your Mac through the internet or through your network, your office network, however you're organized, you can connect to it access it and basically run it through your computer and when i say run it through your computers all you're getting back is the graphical interface everything is still running on the machine you are accessing remotely and that can be a beneficial thing in certain instances um, this obviously does require you having another computer having it all set up with the proper windows office access or whatever program you're wanting to use uh, but it does work very effectively and remote access software has been used for decades amongst other things for providing it support it's one thing i use with many of my clients and it works beautifully obviously this means you have a computer that is available and running and is not being used by someone because when you connect they can't be working so um, it really means you have to have an idle PC available at that point in time, but it does work very well. Another thing that had been brought to my attention in a forum at one point, someone mentioned a piece of software called Crossover, and it allows you to run Windows software in your Mac without having to buy Windows licensing, without having to reboot or even requiring a virtual machine. Now, how it works, I have no clue. I have not been able to investigate it any further, but I have a link here if you press on it and it will bring you here and you can check it out for yourself. And if the claims are true and it really does work, uh, 74 bucks US and you're able to run Windows software, uh, that's pretty tantalizing. Um, so it may be an option, something worth exploring. The last thing I briefly mentioned to you also is Microsoft Query. Microsoft Query does allow you to access data. So the tables, we're talking about the tables and the tables only, and it allows you to view the data. So you can't actually do anything to it. You can't edit, delete, or add, but you can at least read. You don't have access to forms. You don't have access to reports, VBA, all that stuff. You only have access to the raw data via OBDC. Um, but for some, that may be all you're after, and that may be sufficient for your needs. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, virtualization software, boot camp, remote access software, 
crossover Microsoft Query. Those are your five big possible solutions and methods that you can use to run Windows software, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Access, or any other Windows software that you need to run in your Mac environment. I hope this has been informative. I hope this helps a few of you out there, give you a few options that you can explore further, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.